While you were enjoying the Christmas and New Year, one chart, published first by the Financial Times, may have ruined some Conservatives' festivities. Now, avid news consumers might be a little bored of this graph already, but we couldn't not start the year by discussing it. So let's unpack what it tells us, why this change is happening, and how this graph stole Tory Christmas. It's a truism everyone, even vaguely interested in politics, knows. The older you get, the more right-leaning you get. It's not just something people say either, the facts seemingly bear it out. Take the silent generation as an example, those currently aged between 78 to 95 years old. When they were in their 40s, and when political polling started in earnest, they were about 5% more likely to vote for left-wing parties than the national average. As they aged though, this shifted, with them becoming more conservative than average by the time they reached their 50s, and then solidly more right-wing by the time they reached their later years. The same thing happened for the baby boomers, those currently aged between 58 and 78. They might have taken slightly longer to become more conservative than average, but they did get there, and are today actually much more right-leaning than their older counterparts were at their age, or even are today. Gen X are headed in the same direction. They're not old enough to fully gauge, currently aged between 42 and 57, but they certainly are following the expected trend as they get closer to retirement. In fact, while this group did dip significantly more left-wing than their predecessors about 20 years ago, roughly in line with New Labour, they look to cross the average line before the baby boomers. Before we get to the part of the graph that so worries conservatives, millennials, it's worth acknowledging this trend a little further. Not only does the data empirically back up that this isn't just an illusion, people do get more right-wing as they age, but it also makes sense. Some of the most fundamental conservative values center around the maintenance of the status quo, protection of so-called family value, and wealth maintenance. As such, it's easy to see how these values align well not only with aging, but also with key moments in life associated with getting older. Look at the preservation of family units. It makes sense that as you go from being a rebellious teen seeking to forge a unique identity to a parent yourself, the focus you put on family changes. The link to wealth maintenance is even clearer. When you're young and you don't have much personal wealth, the idea of wealth distribution sounds a whole lot more appealing than when you're older, normally wealthier, and much more likely to own a home. Even just the status quo begins to seem more appealing as you get older, as the idea of revolution and different stales, and as you begin to yearn for certainty, protection, and family. In fact, these trends have led many to speculate that it's not actually about age, it's about things like home ownership and raising a family. Now, this is a little hard to actually prove, and data on the issue is a little mixed, but it certainly does seem true that these life moments, buying a home and therefore securing sustainable wealth and having children, fundamentally changes not only how you vote, but also the values you align yourself with. With that in mind, the data for millennials, those currently aged between 26 and 41, makes a lot more sense. That's because, unlike their elders, as this group has got older, they've actually become significantly less right-wing, with millennials today about 15% less conservative than the national average, far, far more left-wing than the older generations were by this phase of their life. But that makes some sense, right? This generation has grown into political maturity through a very different and difficult time. They've seen the recession of 2008, continued economic issues, and deepening political crises. As a result, they've become significantly less able to purchase their own homes, and partially as a result of that, they've become less likely to have children of their own. With these ties to conservatism weakening, this generation is seemingly becoming less aligned from the political expectations. They still like the idea of change and wealth redistribution, because the economic environment they grew up in was so difficult, it didn't allow for wealth redistribution to naturally occur, with not only home ownership falling out of reach, but wealth as a whole becoming more and more concentrated in the older generations. That's a big issue for conservative parties around the world, but especially in the UK. Previously, with generations becoming consistently and reliably more right-wing, these parties were able to rely on a constantly regenerating pool of voters. 
In fact, with the population of the UK ageing, it looked like right-wing voters might be getting replaced faster than they were dying off. This data throws a spanner in that model though. It's easy to blame shifts like this and the Conservatives' poor opinion polling on modern political failings, the likes of the Tory party leadership shambles or Truss's economic mismanagement. But this data goes some way to proving the issue is more deeply rooted. This is known as a cohort effect, where the specific situations and experiences a generation lives through are so fundamentally different from the generations that came before them that they feel the parties of old no longer share their values. That's almost been intentional too, with the Conservatives consciously focusing on issues like protecting the pensions of the elderly while living standards and pay increases slip behind inflation. That's clearly a legitimate political strategy, and one a party like the Conservatives with an older voter base could easily argue to justify. But it could explain why younger voters feel more disaffected by the Tories than previous generations, who broadly expected to become richer and live better lives than their parents did. This can be seen not just in economics, but broader policy too. Brexit marked a significant divergence, not only in the country's future, but also the identities and opinions of the electorate. Not only were the right of the Conservative Party successful in the referendum, they also successfully alienated their younger supporters. In fact, the same data from the FT suggests that two-thirds of millennials who'd previously voted Conservative had changed their mind post-Brexit, with a quarter going from Tory voters to now saying they strongly disliked the Conservatives, the opposite shift to what would be expected from an ageing demographic. Now, it's too soon to start sounding alarms of doom for the Conservative Party. They might be struggling in opinion polling, and this data may suggest they're losing their grip on younger generations, but they are able to course correct here. Remember, I said that this came down to a so-called cohort effect, the feeling that millennials don't fit with what's being offered by the Conservatives. This can be fixed. However, doing so requires fairly major changes. The Conservatives would need to demonstrate that they have something to offer this disaffected generation. That likely means appealing to some of those old factors I mentioned earlier, home ownership and child rearing. If the Conservatives really want to win over the younger and middle-aged, they likely need to reverse the tides of home ownership. Increasing the number of new homes might be a start, but that's politically difficult with older voters and might not even be enough to reset the nightmarish gap between wages and house prices for younger generations. Addressing the cost of having children might help too, with the UK currently pegged as one of the most expensive places to raise a child, almost certainly putting off potential parents. If the Conservatives can find a way to address these issues, or at least appear to, they could lean on the old levers of home ownership and child rearing to get younger voters on side. Actually achieving this could be hard to pull off, as balancing generational divides, economic issues and specific policy proposals always is. Failing to do so isn't really an option though, unless they want to fall even further out of line with younger generations.